What's up, everyone? It's Roger and Victoria here from the Disc Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the recent D23 Expo and the live action sort of slate and panel that got sort of... Well, we didn't see anything because if you weren't at the event, no one got to see it. But we're just talking about some of the news that came out from that event since there was so much news coming out of the D23 Expo. I am going to be honest. Um, other than the wrinkle in time and a very, very small little Facebook 10 seconds of um, Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins. It definitely, and Marvel kept everything back for San Diego Comic-Con. Star Wars weren't doing anything. It felt a little bit flat. I don't know how you felt. Uh, I agree. I mean, I was expecting a little bit more news. Um, I mean, I really loved The Rainbow in Time. I'm very excited for that. I was very excited to hear about the Nutcracker film, too, because I did know Misty Copeland was going to be the uh, main dancer in the film. But other than that, I was expecting a lot more Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, let's look in here at some of the news that came out. They announced um, the Nutcracker in the Four Realms is going to be opening up on November the 2nd. Obviously, if you were at the event, I think at the panel, it might be very different because you had the actors and the actresses coming out. You had directors coming out. You probably you had little sneak peeks. There were trailers and stuff. But people were lining up all night for this. Oh, yeah, they were lining I think from what I recall reading, like people were lining up at 4 a.m. And I think by the time I woke up, they basically had shut down the lot. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I saw some pictures and stuff. I know um, some of the guys, um, Craig and Rhino from the Diz Unplugged podcast, they were literally you know, just asleep overnight in there to get it, and then they managed to get their band to get in. Um, but yeah, it's it was an odd one, because I think if you were there, it probably was doing But I think for um, those of us at home, Disney definitely, I feel like, let the... They definitely, it felt like, yeah, it'll come to Disney, but we really aren't that bothered about trying to get as much present you know we're not live streaming it we're not releasing the videos it, it was just a very odd odd little thing it felt like they weren't really pushing it enough to outside of those in the room no i agree i, I like it actually kind of hurt them in a way because it's like you're putting out all this great news and you expect people to be excited about it but it's like People want to see what they're what they want to see. They want to see yeah. new well, things. Want, yeah, and people want to not only that, but this that thing of, I mean, it's like now San Diego Comic Con have got this thing where you know they've been doing panels. They've not been showing them either, right? So they, but they, you know, you've got so many different companies doing live streams from there. Personally, the only thing I was really ending up watching live from there was all the website. You know, it is. Um, you had I think WD W um with Lou, he was doing some stuff that I think, you know, they were doing more live footage from the event than Disney themselves, and the only thing that ever got officially live streamed was the video game panel thankfully. Yeah, that's I'm waiting for that one actually, but yeah, I pretty much watched other bloggers and mm. doing their own thing so. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately this one wasn't going to be um, live stream. They also talked about some other movies as well um, Mary Poppins Returns opens Christmas 25th, 2018 um, again, um, I don't know whether or not they saw any footage. We saw like a very, very small little clip of Mary Poppins just turning around. It was... To say it was a teaser trailer was a little bit of a... I thought, I put another one. Well, that's not really a teaser trailer. Nothing, nothing happened. Yeah, a teaser trailer usually is about a good two minutes, basically, what I've seen. Although I know at the expo, they did play it with a live orchestra. So I guess mm. it made it a little bit more exciting for us back <laughs> for us yeah. compared to them. They also announced that Mulan is a live action movie um, as well. Um, the Jungle Cruise with The Rock and and also Aladdin with Guy. Um, and they announced that um, was it, we've got Will Smith as the genie. Again, a lot of this stuff has been rumored and been circling around from like Variety and Hollywood Reporter for quite a while. And um, the only thing news really there was that the, um, Will Smith doing the genie. Which I'm going to be honest, I, I actually feel like that's not a bad cat. I think that's. You know, he's quick, he's fast-witted. He needs to let, you know, there's that thing as well. If you let the guy go a little bit and let him kind of go back to how he was a little bit younger, he might be able to get away with this one. Yeah, I mean, I thought Will Smith was a great choice. Now, I'm not going to sit here and compare him to Robin Williams, but I do think yeah. if they do the same treatment that they gave Robin Williams in the animated film, he could do just as good as a job, I would mm. think so. Yeah, now, I, mean, I know the issue is Niall. Yeah, I think to be honest, he was never gonna be. Will Smith was never gonna be able to um, fill in. It was always gonna be hard. He has to make it his own. He has to do it differently. Exactly. Um, 
Um, I mean, when I went to see the Aladdin stage show in London uh, just at Christmas, and you know, he made it his own, and I think that's what they need to do. Um, I know there's been a little bit of controversy over that Naomi Scott is Jasmine, um, because she's not um, basically she's Indian or half Indian, half. Um, I, it's, it's this weird thing of personally, it's that situation of is she, was she the right person for the part, and the, can she play the thing? That to me is more important than it, what you know. There's you know there's so much going on now with controversy and stuff. It's it definitely an odd one. Um, you know, it's you know I think it's definitely an odd little situation, and I don't think really just finding someone of the right ethnic thing and putting them in there. Even I'm sure there's some you know plenty of people qualified stuff to do it, but I hope that in some ways that she's just the right person for the job. Yeah. I See, when I first read about it, I wasn't really sure, but at the end of the day, I have to trust Disney's judgment. So I'm going to hope that she is the right choice for Jasmine. My main concern was Aladdin, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. So I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea who he is and what he's been in, to be honest. Um, um, here we've also got Dumbo coming out March 29th, 2019. Um, Tim Burton <laughs> is doing that one. Live action got Colin Farrell, Danny DeVito, Michael Keaton, and Eva Green. So once again, proving that um, basically if you get in with Tim Burton, you're fine for the rest of your career because he'll only employ people he's worked with. Um, just, basically. It's basically. Like, yeah, I'm like looking at that going, well, it's like, yeah, okay. Um, I mean, personally for me, I can't, I, I, like, I love Tim Burton movies. I've loved lots of them. I'm just feeling a little bit like leave these movies alone and do something original. Um, you know, Mulan, uh, you know, Aladdin, Dumbo, The Lion King. I'm not interested. I'm going to be honest. I'm really am like, I'm not feeling it. I'm not, it just feels like a cash grab because you haven't got anything else to put in its place. Um, calling the Lion King, a live action movie with completely computer generated animals. It's an animated movie. You're remaking it. That's, I'm just, you know, just saying how I feel on that one. No, I, I feel you because, I mean, the thing is, they did it with the Jungle Book. It was a great success. So I feel like they're trying to repeat that success with Lion King. But the thing is, you really can't call that a live action <laughs> film when it's just CGI animals. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, that one kind of threw me for a loop. I, I'm going to be honest. I was never a fan of Dumbo when I was little. I'm 24 years old now. I'm still not. They showed a model of Dumbo. It looks creepy. It's absolutely creepy to me. <laughs> so I won't be seeing that one. It, I wish they would do more original stuff like Utopia. Utopia yeah. was amazing. And yeah. they don't have to do all this. It feels really extra. It just feels like The Lion King is like, okay, we're just remaking it, but we're going to try and remake it. You know, I could maybe, um, but doing so many of them, and, you know, trying to do it, I mean, Beauty and the Beast came out on Blu-ray this week. We literally could rent it on, on Amazon for one ninety nine every day. And my wife just turned around and goes, I don't want to see it. She loved the original. I actually loved it. But it's like, I don't want to see a read. A, it's like, I might as well just watch the original. Um, Cinderella was awful. Maleficent wasn't very good. Um, the Jungle Book, I thought, was overrated. Um... It's just, I, I'm not a fan of this, like, and I feel like they are just, a Pete's Dragon was, at least Pete's Dragon did something different. It was a completely different story. It was different. Um, but I just feel they're going to run this um, this style into the ground for five years and then they'll just dump a lot of it. I mean, see, I'm different. I try to give them a chance. I try not to write them off. Like, I love Cinderella, Maleficent, okay. Jungle Book, I'm glad I got to see for free. <laughs> Peach Dragon, I, I was already told not to see it, so I feel blessed that I didn't spend money on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went to see it at, um, at the cinema. Um, I love the Peach Dragon movie. I, I mean, I, I love the original, but I, I like the fact they took it and it, they redid it. It was so different from the original that it worked. Um, Jungle Book was alright, but Cinderella, I just thought, was a big bore. Um, just did not like that at all. Um, they kind of showed off a a bit more of Star Wars The Last Jedi. They kind of did this like behind the scenes trailery kind of thing and just talk about how great it all is. Um, it's probably great if you were there, but it didn't really feel like Star Wars got any of the attention 
from the movie side of things. That they, it's, it's, they, were, they weren't really holding out for that. See, and that's what I was afraid of back when we did um, Star the, what is it called Star Wars Celebration. Like yeah. I thought they were, I felt like they gave away too much, hmm. and then, then they weren't going to give anything away for you know D twenty three, which obviously they proved me right. I was expecting a little bit more. Yeah, um, Marvel definitely. They did the one thing Marvel did seem to do very well was they pretty much brought the entire Marvel cinematic universe onto the stage. Um, they were all there. Um, they got to see the Infinity War for Ragnarok, so there's a lot of stuff. I mean, they definitely brought in brought in the big guns for that. Yeah, I think they're. I have no complaints about any of that, to be quite honest. Because I mean, they brought out the princesses all on stage, so you know, next step up is the new Marvel, and I yeah. personally had no issues about that. <laughs> but the, the thing is, again, is and it feels bad in some ways because um, I feel like you know you had that much money on the table all that stuff and you know they, they sent us some photographs and stuff after the event but there's no video of it there's no real footage of it out there you know they must have spent a fortune getting these people in and being there for this event you know you had all like Luke Skywalker and all the you know Mark Hamill you had all them out there for the Star Wars ones I felt like either streaming it or clipping it up and putting that out afterwards would have made a lot more sense in some ways it just felt like they they completely neglected everybody away, and obviously they want to sell tickets and stuff. But it feels like they didn't quite get the attention from the press outside because no, the press couldn't see what was going on either. Oh, see, I didn't know that. In which case, yeah, it definitely. See, and this is what I was saying, you know, to you a while back about when we were discussing if they should stream it or not. And then, like, they did stream it, I guess, but they only typed out basically what was going on. I'm like, I don't care. I don't want to read it. I can read it after it happens. Yeah. I want to see it. It's definitely this, like, weird line, I think, because, you know, they've got to, if they stream everything, then no, then there's a, a thing of, like, people not wanting to go there. Um, it's like the Parks panel. You know, we've talked about that last week in quite depth about the fact that people were streaming it from Periscope and all the rest of it. You know, I can understand, you know, this thing up there's an Infinity War trailer cut floating around while we are recording this one. And I don't want to watch it because I want to watch it in HD on the television and I don't want to watch some grainy, shoddy looking um, footage of what could be one of the best Marvel movies ever. So I understand that point of view, but like take control of it, own it, you know, get the trailers out. You know, had they done, I mean, the Wrinkle of Time, that trailer was out pretty much instantly. You know, if they just literally just had bombarded, you know, with like 10, 20 second clips and just gone, right, this is what everyone, you know, the character, people coming out onto the stage, okay, don't show us that. But if we'd seen a little bit more of it, it would have probably have helped. I feel like they didn't really hit the smash. Uh, you know, this is for the next two years of their slate. And I don't feel they really came out and kind of, did the best they could with what they had because it just looks like such an amazing event that just was definitely much kept behind closed doors i genuinely feel like they just weren't ready i feel like it was kind of rushed and they were like okay if we're gonna put out one trailer we're just gonna put out this one now granted everyone a few people have read the books a regular time of course i'm excited yeah. but i wanted to see so much more mm -hmm. like you said this is your two year study yeah this is all like i want to see what you have yeah, it definitely was a bit of an odd one. Um, I definitely feels to me like the park people, the park was the the big heavy hitters for the Disney fans. You know, that was where, I mean, the buzzing over the weekend of the D23 Expo from the park side of things completely just flooded through. The movies just didn't, you know, I had a lot of people sort of talking about how great Infinity War trailer was. Um, and they would have, like, yeah, I was uh, just like, that's fine, I guess. <laughs> but a lot, even I saw on some of the big websites, and on, even on like Twitter moments, they were like, We want the Infinity War trailer now. And I was like, Oh, okay. It's, it's like instantly went from, you know, instead of being hype, it went to, No, there's some entitlement to the point of, You've this is it's out there, we want to see it. This isn't it, it was an odd, it didn't, I don't know how it, it seemed to work. I was, because there's just, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot, not, there's just, what, 10,000 people in the arena for that show? There's a, a lot more Disney fans outside, you know, not at the arena and not at the Anaheim. 
that would have well loved to have seen what was going on there and kind of but at the same time maybe they didn't want to kind of show off too much i know they did it in the past with moana they showed off some footage of that very early on and zootopia way before um we ever saw a trailer yeah i, I just feel like if you're gonna do that much with marvel and have basically everyone that's gonna be in the film come out on stage you might as well show the trailer to the world. It's like, you can't, like, I don't know. I would just very disappointed mm. that as far as Marvel. Because I remember with, like, Star Wars that it was, you know, they showed that thing with Star Wars Celebration. Of, that trailer came out instantly for everybody. Um, they showed the footage of them all introducing it and talking about it. And maybe that's that thing of, you know, when you have been treated so well with, like, the Star Wars Celebration streaming everything and... You know, so much, you know, E3, you know, all the big presentations and stuff from the video. It's, you start, that's what you start expecting. And then when they kind of go, whoa, 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 no, we're going back to what it was like 20 years ago. Um, no one taking any pictures and stuff. It's like, whoa, really? You're going backwards? You're kind of cutting into your own hype train now. Yeah, and then you get, you know, the situation with Infinity War where someone leaves the trailer and it's not good quality. And then at that point, you might as well just... Yeah. Show everyone a good quality trailer. I mean, we know DC had issues with that as well. But well, let us know what you guys thought of what was kind of revealed. Though, again, I didn't really. We kind of knew all of it before. We, <laughs> everything that got announced was like, yeah, well, that's all been rumored from Variety and stuff for a long time. There wasn't really anything, like I said, there was, you know, nothing groundbreaking got announced. Yeah, it was it was a little disappointing. I'll yeah. definitely say that. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. You can also um, subscribe on the audio platforms as well, and you can leave us a review there. Victoria, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter, and he calls me PP. And Instagram, he calls me Pineapple Prince. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you guys soon. Laters. Bye.